Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the nutrients that's getting a lot of attention, especially in corn production, is zinc. We're going to talk about zinc, what levels you need to see in your soils, and how important it could be for any crop that you're raising. Well, when we start talking about fertility, there are a lot of different ways to apply fertilizer. One of the ways that's been growing in popularity in the last few years is strip-till. We'll discuss that today. One other thing we'll be discussing is the identity of our weed of the week. Now, of course, we're going to talk about how to control it, but it can be misidentified as one of those really tough, uh, resistant weeds that we're seeing across the country. So we want to make sure you can differentiate it in your fields. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Brian, we've got a problem. We've got the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal App, and it's getting used by thousands and thousands of farmers really across the world. That's cool. However, it can be a little misleading because on the Fertilizer Removal App, if you look up, say, 200 bushel corn, for example, it'll tell you how much the grain will remove from the soil and from your field, and it'll also tell you how many nutrients the stover will take up. And I've talked to a number of farmers that have said, well, hey, I'm looking at how much the stover takes up. Is that what's left in my crop residues? No, no. not even close. Please don't look at that and think, well, this is what's left in my crop residue. If I bale it up, that's how many nutrients leave my farm. However, there are still nutrients in that plant residue that's laying out in your field. And if you do choose to remove that from your field, we want to talk about that today. All right, here's why we're bringing this up during our Farm Basics time. If you're a non-farmer, as you're driving past fields all across the country, you'll see residue that's laying out there. Or let me, let me put it to something you can really relate to, your lawn. A lot of people will mow their lawns and they'll take that grass away. They'll take those grass clippings away. Well, when you take those grass clippings away, what goes along with that? Fertilizer. Ideally, what we want to do is leave the grass in the lawn leave all those clippings in the lawn, and as they break down, they'll release fertilizer for the next crop of grass. It's the same kind of thing out in the fields. If a farmer leaves his residue out in the fields, as that breaks down, it releases fertility for the next crop. Well, the thing is, many farmers look at this as, you know what, my livestock could eat that residue. And I could either graze out in the field, or hey, I can harvest, take the grain away, and maybe I'll bale up some of those stalks. And we see many farmers, especially those who have cattle, for example, bailing up a portion of the stalks that are out in the field, feeding it to the cattle. Well, is that wrong? No, absolutely not. That's a great thing that you can do, is use that residue to be a portion of that cow's diet. The important thing, in my opinion, is to see the manure from the cattle go back on the field. So basically, you've run that uh, plant material through the cow, the cow has processed the material, and you can put it back on your farm as highly available fertilizer for the next year's crop. Like Brian was saying, if we leave the residue in the field, it becomes fertilizer on its own, and that's fine. It just takes a while for it to happen. Uh, if it happens to run through an animal, well, that's a great way to go because now it's available for the next year's crop. All right, here's the big question that you may have. Uh, what's that residue worth out there? So let's say that I take it off as opposed to leave it on the field. What's it really worth? Well, it all depends on the crop and how many nutrients that crop has overall extracted from the soil. But all I can tell you is this. If I've just raised 200 bushel corn and I've got stalks out there, I figure the value of those stocks could be worth anywhere from $10 to $30 per acre in terms of fertility value. And it varies quite a bit because if you get rain on those stocks pretty quickly after harvest or even late in the growing season, you'll find that some of the potassium is already starting to flush out. Potassium is probably the number one nutrient left in residue. But if you get a whole bunch of rain on it before that residue is bailed up or taken off the field, well, that means that there's a lot less potassium in there and the value of the residue is worth a lot less money. So just something for you to be thinking about, a general idea. It obviously depends on the value of fer fertilizer today, 
how many stalks you have, how much residue you have overall, and how much fertilizer you remo remove from the soil. But all we're saying here is it's not worth lots of money, but you know what, 10 to $30 an acre, uh, it's quite a bit. That really adds up over quite a few acres. The best thing you can do is take a sample of the corn stalks or whatever plant residue you're thinking about baling up and taking off your field. Just take a sample, send it into a lab, have it analyzed for the amount of nutrients that's in there, and then you can see exactly what the value is on your farm before you make those decisions. Well, one of the decisions every farmer has to make is how to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show. With new seed traits and chemistries entering the market, your crop protection equipment needs precision and adaptability. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies has the products to give your applications greater accuracy, less drift, and more coverage. Hypro, right on technology, right on target. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. The ease of use on the Spartan is pretty simple. I can hook this up in five minutes. Anybody that runs a chopper that chops any sort of sorghum, cane silage, anything like that, anything that is tough that ever goes down, Spartan is the best thing that we have found and we've been looking for something like this for over 15 years and it blew me away. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. We've been growing Stein corn for two years now. We're on our second year of it. We gave it our best shot last year and it made, made us believe that what we were seeing, we had to keep going. Once we came to harvest, you run that combine through in the yield monitor and I mean, it just, it created way too many questions. There were bushels out there that we had never even seen before and I mean, it was, it was just crazy. I choose Stein because of their results. I choose Stein because Stein has yield. One of the most important nutrients on your farm is actually a micronutrient. You don't need much of it, but if you don't have it, you're never going to have top yields. What we're going to talk about today is zinc. All right, Brian, on our soil test that we're running at Midwest Labs, six yep. inch soil test, yep. we're shooting for 1.8 to 3.5 parts per million of zinc, and that's kind of the range we'd like to fall into As a on most statement. soils. And yeah. you think about that 1.8 parts per million to 3.5 parts per million, yet this is going to determine whether <laughs> I get high yields or not? Yeah, and it's one of these things, too, where you say, okay, I'm really going to load my ground up for high yield. And I've had it even on this ground that we're standing right in front of right oh, now. Oh, this is a great when example. I, when I field. first got this ground almost 20 years ago now, I was told, hey, put on a whole bunch of phosphorus. That's going to solve a lot of your high yield problems. Well, and no, you no, did no. go was, up. Hey, you're going to need more phosphorus on your farm. And Brian's idea is, well, let's just get it over no, with. No, no, let's I was do told, it. no. I was told at least three or 400 pounds of, of phosphorus. So that's what I did. But the problem is, I forgot about zinc. Well, zinc ties directly with phosphorus. In other words, if you put too much phosphorus on, or let's, let's put it another way, if you really build your phosphorus levels up, all of a sudden the zinc you have there in the soil may now be less available. So if you're really gonna build up phosphorus, you also really have to build up zinc. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, 
really building up zinc is going from 1.8 to 3.5 parts per million. It's no big deal. It's no big expense. But still, if you forget that, it causes major problems. Okay, so here's the tricky part is, well, how many pounds is that and how do I read that soil test? Let's just give you a quick little lesson. So on a six inch soil test, each three inches of soil out on your farm is roughly a million pounds. So on, on a one acre basis, three inches of soil is roughly a million pounds. So six inches, if you're taking a six inch sample, well that's two million pounds of soil that's representing. So if you have a parts per million reading on your soil test, well you just take that times two, since you have two million pounds of soil, so parts per million times two equals pounds per acre. So if we're looking at, let's just say two parts per million of zinc. Well, multiply that times two, you get four pounds per acre. That's all we're looking for out in the field is four pounds per acre. There are a lot of different ways you can get zinc. There's liquid, there's dry, there are a whole bunch of different formulations of each. You can have it in a blend, you can have it by itself. But I'll just tell you, on our farm, what we've typically done when we're really short on zinc, just in some spots in fields, we might go spread zinc sulfate all by itself and just go hit those spots. The difference between zinc and some other nutrients like nitrogen, for example, you don't find zinc moving down in the soil profile with water. It pretty much stays where you've put it. So if you've broadcast your zinc and barely worked it in or been in a no-till situation in the past, what you're going to find is high concentrations of zinc in the top inch of soil. Here's why that's not good. First of all, a lot of your roots are going to be below an inch. But the main reason why we worry about it on our farm, we've got some rolling hills. Well, if you have any soil erosion at all, what moves with the soil? The zinc. So where do you think we've had our zinc deficiencies on our own farm in the past? On the side hills or maybe even the hilltops. So we go to those side hills and hilltops, hit those with some more zinc, and then try to reduce tillage there, maybe get the zinc down deeper in the soil, something like that, so we don't have to worry about this so much in the future. So how are we trying to address our zinc problems? Well, for many farmers, it's, well, I'm planting corn, so I'm going to put a quart of zinc in my furrow with my starter. Well, guess what? In parts of the field, that's probably going to be a help. In other parts of the field where you've been putting it on and putting it on and putting it on, maybe you've already got too much zinc. Who knows? But by putting that same rate on across the whole farm, well, it's going to be pretty inefficient in certain areas. In some areas, you may need a lot of zinc and you're not even putting enough on. Maybe targeting, maybe. targeting what you're doing and yeah. grid sampling or sampling on a much smaller basis out on your fields can allow you to vary that rate as you go through the field, which I think will get you much better results because it certainly has for us. All we're trying to say here is rather than take a shot in the dark, do some grid or zone soil sampling and then do some plant tissue analysis too. What we see on the plant tissue side is quite often we'll find across the country yellow tops to corn plants. And a lot of people say, oh, that's just fast growth syndrome and the plant will grow out of it. No, that's ridiculous. When you see yellow in the corn plant, you've got a major, major yield problem. So go out and sample those plants, send them in for analysis. Quite often, you're going to find you've got a zinc problem. Well, it just brings up the point. When, when somebody's telling you, hey, this is what I think your problem is out in the field, go and check. It doesn't cost much to take a plant tissue test. It's about 20 bucks and you get results back in just a few days. You can find out exactly where you're at. And what I would suggest, that, that's one point in time. Hey, I see a yellow flash. It goes away after a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, probably wasn't a big deal is what you may be thinking. What I would suggest is not just taking a plant tissue test at that time. I'd recommend picking a couple spots on your farm and taking a plant tissue test each week for 10 or 12 weeks through the growing season just to see what's going on because you may have areas where you know what you did put that zinc in the furrow and zinc levels look good for a while and then they run out. The only way to find that out is by doing some testing on your farm and it really doesn't cost much money or take much time. Once again we really encourage you soil test and use plant tissue analysis to find out what you need for zinc on your farm and just understand if you've got really high phosphorus levels you're going to need to bump up your zinc probably quite a bit just to kind of equal things out. Well, one other thing you want to watch for out in your fields is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run, and uh, it worked out really well for us. Morton has built me one heck of a nice building and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship.
Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. We farm mostly soybeans, uh, probably a third of it is corn. Uh, we switched to the Liberty Link trait about five years ago. We've had real good success with it. Uh, it's helped us control our weeds. Our biggest weed challenge would be the uh, pigweed. And we get our fields clean when we start. And then we usually try to come back 28 to 30 days after planting with our Liberty and a post emerge. And the Liberty is just easier and we don't have to be a chemist to mix our chemical. Very simple, and it works. It's all done real well, and we're just very happy with the Liberty Link system. The Liberty Link system, a simply better solution, now backed by the Liberty Weed Control Guarantee, because Liberty is simply better weed control by Bayer. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. Over the last few years, we've had lots of farmers around the country asking us about strip-till. We've done a fair amount of strip-till on our farm, so today we want to talk about how to do strip-till and some of the differences there are there, especially when we talk about shank versus coulter machines. Well, one of the things that's great about strip-till is you're accomplishing multiple jobs at the well, same you time. Can. You with can. With one pass through the field. So yes. you think about seed bed preparation, residue management, nutrient placement. There's all these things that can get done at one time. The problem is that strip-till rig runs kind of slow and it's tough to do yep. lots and lots of acres with one machine, especially if you're the guy running the machine and you're also the guy trying to run the combine. So you got to get all the crop out, then you can start with the strip-till. Now, if you're blessed in your operation with multiple guys that can do lots of things, great. Uh, you can go ahead and have somebody else run the strip-till rig and you can get a lot done and, and you can keep up pretty well. But if you've got to share uh, operators, then it can be a challenge. All right, here's where we like strip-till best, is in the fall using RTK to set our rows for next spring. And this will be the only tillage that we'll typically do. So it's kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're going to have no till in most of the field, but in these strips, right where you're going to plant next spring, well now you've got tillage. Now you're going to have much warmer soil, probably five to 10 degrees warmer in the spring in those strips. And then the other side of it is putting the fertilizer on. We prefer a shank machine because what we find across the country is a lot of farmers have good fertility levels in their top three inches of soil, but you get down six inches, nine inches, 12 inches deep, and the soil's not in the best shape. But there are all kinds of roots down there. There's lots of moisture down there. So why not add some plant food too? It leads to higher yields and it leads to a lot more drought proof crop. Hey, one thing you may be thinking already is, well, what if I want to do the strip till in the spring versus in the fall? We like to do it in the fall in our geography because the ground is a lot drier at that point. Uh, in the spring, especially if you've had some snow out there, that ground is just different to work with. And a lot of times it can be wet, it can be sticky, especially down deep six, eight, ten inches deep like Brian was talking about where we're trying to place fertility. So for us, it's a lot easier to work with the soil in the fall, but I realize the time crunch can be a challenge. Well, what we always talk to guys about is if you're going to go with a shank machine in the spring, no way. You, by the time you can actually get out there with that shank, you should have been planting a week or two earlier. So in the spring, what most people are doing for strip-till is a coulter machine. And the coulter machine is fine, it's just you can't put fertilizer that deep. 
So if you can only run in the spring, we're probably going to recommend to you, depending on your situation, a coulter machine, but you want to get that fertilizer down as deep as you can. I'm just not a real big believer in the coulter machines to do it every single year because I, I, I'm worried that I can't get that fertilizer down deep enough. So that's really my big concern there. Otherwise, in terms of seed bread preparation, uh, you know, dealing with that residue, that stuff's all great. We've used coulter machines. We just used one this past uh, spring too on some new ground that we picked up. Couldn't do anything in the fall. We could in the spring. So it's great. We love that. But we really like the fertilizer benefit, getting it deeper with the shank machine and doing that in the fall. Here's the big thing though. You're going to have to make some adjustments to those machines as you run across different acres on your farm. So you may go to one field that's really light soil, light fluffy soil. Uh, you don't want to be digging in too much because now all of a sudden you may have a depression instead of a berm where you want to put next to your seed. Uh, then you get to some heavy ground that's really compacted and hard and all of a sudden, well, if you're going really light, you may not be doing enough. So you have to make some adjustments as you go. Don't be afraid to get out of the machine and, and make some adjustments so you get the perfect seed bed for next year's crop. I guess the last thing I wanted to mention with strip till, a lot of people will ask us, all right, should I just put my P and K on? Should I do nit nitrogen? Should I do micronutrients? It's up to you what you want to run. We've done all of those things or almost none of those things. Definitely, we're putting P and K on. If we're doing it in the fall, we're not too worried about losing those nutrients. We worry a lot more about losing nitrogen. So if we're going to do nitrogen, a lot of times it's at a reduced rate. With the micronutrients, to be safe, a lot of times we talk about broadcasting micros or putting them on with the planter, but you certainly could do micronutrients as well. Now the downside of strip tillage is you aren't going to wipe out the weeds all over like you will with conventional till. We'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our weed of the week is red root pigweed. Okay, so I want to talk about this right away. This is not palmer pigweed, and this is not tall water hemp. But it is a pigweed, and it looks very similar to those other two. So here we go. It's another pigweed. How do you tell this one apart? It's real easy. We just call this hairy pigweed. Call it hairy pigweed. The other ones call those smooth pigweed. Red root pigweed is going to have hairs all over the plant, and that's really how you identify it. Okay, the good thing with red root pigweed is we can still control it with more herbicides than we can a tall water hemp or a palmer pigweed. Well, at least today. So we haven't found the Roundup resistance issue in red root pigweed that we have in some of these other weeds. But, but nevertheless, we still strongly encourage you, start with a good pre-emerge herbicide. In corn, you've got lots of options. Even the regular Harness or Pass Outlook Dual, they're pretty decent on red root pigweed. Certainly, we like Verdict better, Balance Flex is better. You've got lots of options there. Post-emerge, I really like Status. If you add a little bit of atrazine to it, I like it even better. In soybeans, our three pre-emerge herbicide program we're using for Palmer and for tall water hemp is very effective on red root So pigweed. that's a yellow metribuzin and one of the PPOs, either Valor or Authority. Post-emerge, we can use something like a Cobra or a Flexstar, but you could also use things like Pursuit. They were still effective on red root pigweed. Yeah, and Roundup is still working on red root pigweed, as is Liberty. On wheat, we don't have a whole lot of trouble with red root pigweed. I'd start with Sharpen Down, followed by Husky post-emerge. But once again, red root pigweed is different than a lot of the other pigweeds out there. We're not having the Roundup resistance issues, but still, there are tens of millions of red root pigweed plants out there. You've got to get this thing under control if you want top yields. That's all the time we have for this week's Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro 
and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Attention farmers, are you able to sell your grain for a premium? Your local AgriDry dealer can show you how farmers are seeing a return on their investment with AgriDry products this year. Higher test weights, even distribution of foreign material, and target moisture premiums are all benefits AgriDry customers are seeing on their grain sales tickets this year. Are you ready to start making more money on your store grain? Visit AgriDryLLC.com to find your local dealer today. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Sometimes, getting the yield you want means you need a whole new game plan. Think about it. When the older, conventional fertilizer you've been using goes head-to-head -head with tough soil conditions, they can get all tied up before they ever have a chance to score. That's when it's time to regroup. Time to send in the A-Team. AgroLiquid isn't like other fertilizers. Their nutrient-balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations in just the right amounts. And because of AgroLiquid's unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. So you could wind up having one heck of a championship season. Make a smart start with AgroLiquid. To find the closest nutrient coach near you, visit agroliquid.com. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. There was a lot of lodging in soybean fields across the country this year. Today's Iron Talk will discuss one tool that helped harvest those beans efficiently. Soybean lodging is caused by one or more of a number of factors, including low fertility, most notably with potassium, high winds, excessive rains, and genetic susceptibility. Picking up soybeans that are leaning at a 45 degree angle or even more is a real challenge. On our farm, one of the things I've really liked is the Crary wind system. We've been running Crary air reels for years, and the wind system is the new improvement. Now, soybeans feed into the head evenly with the air reel rather than bunching up, and we're able to thresh them efficiently without loss at the head. The speed we're able to run is also significantly better than when we don't run the air reel. Farmers also remark how the air reel allows them to get started earlier in the day and run later into the night. Of course, all these benefits of the air reel system are not dependent on having lodged soybeans. You'll see similar improvements in performance in any soybeans, as well as other crops such as wheat and lentils. If you've had trouble getting an even flow of material into your combine at harvest, trying out a curry wind system might be the answer for you. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The quick till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the quick till is ideal for both spring and fall applications. From preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's our time for today, but before we go, we want to encourage you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show, where we take your live phone calls each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We've got another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Soil is nature's filter to keep contaminants out of our water. As rain falls on soils and seeps down through, the minerals and microbial life in the soil remove and detoxify nutrients as well as inorganic materials. To learn how farmers manage soil and groundwater, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org. <laughs>